Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing unit six, lesson nine for phonics. Let's get busy. Let me get my screen shared with you. All right, let's get rid of all these extra things that we have floating around. Get it in present mode. All right, lesson nine. So our targets today, I can build a simple phrase into a detailed sentence by using prepositions. I can use personal pronouns in sentences, and I can ask any questions about key details in the story, ants. So we will practice making longer phrases by adding descriptive words called adjectives to nouns. Remember, we talked about adjectives in our last lesson. So repeat after me, bike, bike, new bike, new bike. Big new bike, big new bike, big new red bike, big new red bike. Now we went from bike to big bike, big new bike, big new red bike. So we added three descriptive words there to that sentence, didn't we? Yes. All right. So let's do school. Repeat after me. School. School. Big school. Big school. Big new school. Big new school. Big new brick school. Big new brick school. So we went from school to big school. Big new school to big new brick school. We added three new adjectives there to school to describe it. Okay, let's do another one. Cookie, repeat it. Cookie, repeat after me again. Cookie, big cookie, big fresh cookie, big fresh cookie, big fresh sweet cookie, big fresh, sweet cookie. So we went from cookie to big cookie to big, fresh cookie to big, fresh, sweet cookie. We added three adjectives there to describe cookie, big, fresh, and sweet. So when you write, you should strive to make your writing interesting. One way to do this is by adding words called prepositions to simple sentences. So prepositions are tiny words that give information about time, place, etc. in a sentence. For example, the penguin jumps over the monster. Over is how or where the penguin jumped, okay? She is above the pencil. It shows where she's at, above. He sits in the tree. Where in? is the preposition there. So the mouse ran. It's a very simple sentence. Can you find the noun and the verb? So who is that sentence about? We know the noun is the mouse, right? What verb, what did the mouse do? He ran. So mouse is the noun, ran is the verb. Well, where did the mouse run? We don't know, do we? So, Let's try to figure out something. The mouse ran under the desk or the mouse ran to the kitchen. The mouse ran from the room or the mouse ran behind the bed. The words there in blue are prepositions. Under, to, from, and behind. They are all like locations of where he could have went. So here's another simple sentence. The kid sat. Can you find the noun and the verb in this sentence? Well, we know the kid is the noun. And what did the kid do? He sat. So sat is the verb. So we have kid as the noun. Sat is the verb. But we don't know where did the kid sit. The kid sat near the teacher. The kid sat 
on the chair. The kids sat in the clubhouse or the kids sat under the tree. Notice the words in blue are prepositions and they are locations where the kids sat. We have near, on, in, and under. So the kid played. Kid is the noun there. Played is the verb. But where did the kid play? The kid played in the pool. The kid played during recess. The kid played on the playground. The kid played near the tree. The words in blue are prepositions. In, during, on, and near. All right. I'm going to show you some sentences, and then we're going to discuss the sentences to help us understand more about pronouns. Jen danced yesterday. Blank had a fun time. So let's reread that pink sentence. Jen danced yesterday. Who is that sentence about? It's about Jen, right? Okay. Let's fill in the blank. Who had a fun time? She had a fun time. So the word she is a pronoun. It takes the place of a noun and the noun she is replacing is Jen. So we're taking Jen out of the sentence and replacing it with she. So when we replace this with another word, it's called a pronoun. Ben rides a horse. So let's replace the name Ben with a pronoun. What could we put in place of Ben? How about he rides a horse? We replace Ben with he because he is the pronoun there. Horse, the horse is big. So let's replace the word horse with a pronoun. We can't put he or she, can we? No, because it's not a girl or a boy. This is a thing, so it, we are going to replace it with it. It is big. It is the pronoun that replaces horse. He, it, and she are the pronouns that we've learned so far. Okay. Francis said, I ate pancakes yesterday. The comma shows that something is about to be said. Quotation marks show someone is speaking. And notice you have quotation marks at where the person starts speaking and where she ends her speaking. Francis said, I ate pancakes yesterday. Who ate pancakes yesterday? Francis did, right? So Francis ate them. Which word took the place of the word Francis? Well, if you come over here to our sentence, it says, I ate pancakes yesterday. So we replaced the word Francis with the word I. I is another pronoun that takes the place of a word. Francis is the one we're replacing here. I have black socks. Who has black socks? James does. The pronoun I replaces his name. So let's move on. Marge asked Francis, did you like the pancakes? Whom did Marge ask if he liked the pancakes? He asked Francis, right? Okay. Francis, which word replaced Francis. Well, it says Marge asked Francis, did you like the pancakes? It would be the word you, right? Yep, the word you is the pronoun that replaces the name Francis. So when somebody else is talking about him, Marge asked Francis, did you like the pancakes? You replace Francis. All right, so we're gonna make up another sentence with the pronoun you. 
You are wearing a blue shirt. Who is wearing a blue shirt? Kate is wearing a blue shirt. The pronoun you replaces her name. All right, so let's look at our worksheet about pronouns here. All right, so on this sheet, let's look at our directions here. The directions say, have students underline the pronoun in each sentence and draw a connecting line from the pronoun to the noun it replaces and then have the students write the pronoun on the line. Okay, here we go again. You're underlining the pronoun in the sentence. You're drawing a line to the noun it replaces. That's two things. And then you've got to write the pronoun on the line. Now notice at the top of our page, they have the five pronouns that we've been over so far. He, she, it, I, and you. Those are the pronouns that you should find in these sentences listed below. All right. Okay. So let's go back to our slide here. All right. So we're going to read a story called Ants. So it's an exciting thing that Grace learns about ants at school. So let's re preview some spellings. We have the S spelled with a C, Grace, Francis, Raced, and Center. We have S spelled with S-E, Glimpse, Else, and Grace. But Grace isn't spelled with S-E, it's spelled with C-E. Other two syllable words, we have kitchen, plastic, insects, and termites. Three syllable words, excitement. Now, it says we use the same chunking strategy that you've used when working with two syllable words. Okay, excitement, three syllables there. So let's preview vocabulary. We have the word insect. An insect is a small animal that has six legs and a body formed of three parts. It's a bug. Then we have the word inhale. That means to breathe air into your lungs. Then we have the word glimpse. That means just a quick look. All right, so today we're gonna read a story to find out what makes Grace so excited about ants. So let's escape out of here and let's go to our story. Ants. The next week, Grace came running after class. Mom, she said as she raced into the kitchen, we got an ant farm for our classroom. It's made of plastic so you can see into it. You can look inside and see what the ants are up to. You can see them when they take bits of food to their nest. It is so cool because you get a glimpse into the lives of ants. Her mom smiled and nodded. She was glad to see Grace filled with excitement. Grace went on, Miss Frances says that ants are insects. All insects have six legs. Bees and termites are insects too but they are not as cool as ants. In fact, some ants can lift objects that are 100 times bigger than them. There's Miss Frances and Grace. Cool, what else did Miss Frances tell you? Asked her mom. Ants have a queen, but not a king, Grace said. The queen is the top ant. She is the boss. The rest of the ants feed her and take care of her. I like the sound of that, said her mom. But it's a hard life for her, said Grace. She has to make lots of eggs. She has to be deep in the center of the ant hill all the time. Grace stopped to inhale. Then she looked at mom. She asked mom, mom, can I run out into the yard and look for ants? 
you can, said her mom, and out Grace ran. Look, did she find some ants? She sure did. Okay, so let's get back to our story here. All right, so what did Grace's classroom get? They got a ant farm, didn't they? So what is an ant farm? Well, an ant farm is a see-through plastic container that you can look into and see what the ants are doing. Number three, why is the queen ant's life hard for her? She has to lay a lot of eggs, doesn't she? And she has to stay in the center of her colony. Number four, why might Grace think ants are cooler than bees and termites? Maybe because she is able to see them in that plastic container, and what they do and how they work and everything, right? Whereas she hasn't seen that with bees and termites. All right, so let's look at worksheet about ants, 9.2. All right, ants. All right, you can look back in our story for the answers to this. What is an ant farm? And we just discussed that too. And I don't need a page number. Number two, who is the queen? Mm, talked about that too. Number three, how do the rest of the ants take care of the queen? What do they do for her? Make sure to write it down, not the page number though. And number four, why could the queen's life be a hard life? What makes it so hard? All right, write it down, but I don't need a page number, all right? Okay, so let's get back to our slides. Okay, and it says worksheet 9.3. So if we look at worksheet 9.3 also, right here, it says for each word, have students circle and count the spellings. It's been a while since we've done this. Then write the number of sounds in the box and then copy the word on the lines. So our first word is choice. Okay, you've got to circle the spellings. Choice. You should have it circled three times. The C and the H is circled. The O and the I are circled. And the C, E are circled. So how many did you circle? You circled three. So you're going to put three in that box. And then you're going to write the word choice out on the line. Let's do the word scent. Scent. So you're going to go s i n t. So how many sounds do you have? You have three sounds. So you're going to write a three right there. You should have the C circled, the E circled, and the n t, the n t circled. Then you're going to write scent. All right. So that leaves you number three, four five, six, seven, and eight to do on your own. I did the first two for you. You have the six to do. Okay, so let's get back here to our slides. So our learning targets, I can build a simple phrase into a detailed sentence using prepositions. I can use personal pronouns in sentences and I can ask and answer questions about key details in the story, ants. All right, so we are going to stop sharing. All right, my friends, that's the end of this lesson. And I will see you back here again tomorrow. Bye, guys.